before we can begin analysis, let's upload data. So we will simply copy these URLs like this, select, put it on the clipboard. And here I'm going to click upload button, click paste fetch data button, and simply put uh, paste these data sets into this box. Now I'm going to set the data type to fastq.sanger.gzip because this is what these data are. They're in this format. And I will click start. You can see that data sets are now being added to the history. And in a few seconds they will become yellow and ultimately they will become green, which means they're ready for the analysis. Okay, now we're ready to go. So uh, there are uh, eight data sets. It's actually four samples, and this is paired in data. So each sample is represented by two data sets. Let's um, organize them as a collection. So I will click on this checkbox button. We'll select all the data sets. And for all selected, uh, build a list of data set pairs. This will bring up this wizard. So um, our data sets already have underscore one and underscore two, and this is why Galaxy automatically knows how to pair them. But let's pretend that's not the case. Let me just get rid of this, get rid of that. So I'm just going to unpair them all. So normally you would see something like this. If you look at these data sets carefully, they have underscore one and underscore two. Well, that means underscore one is the forward read and underscore two is the reverse read. So let's give Galaxy a clue. All data sets that are forward have underscore one. And you see, once I enter this, this, is, this gets filtered to only those data sets that have underscore one. And here, I'll give Galaxy a clue that all my reverse data sets have underscore two. And you can see it's also automatically filtered to that. And uh, they're sorted in the same order, so we can pair them one by one like this. Or you can just click auto pair and it will pair them all automatically. So this is our collection structure. It has four samples. Each sample consists of two data sets, forward and reverse. And let's name this like that. So M117 collection. We can leave these checkboxes the way they are. Uh, and what this really means is that the original data sets will be hidden in the history. We won't see them anymore. They won't pollute our view. And this will remove that .gzip uh, off of uh, data set names. Let's create collection. Okay, well, now I have one item. If I click on it, uh, I can, again, I can expand it. I can click on it. You have four data sets. If I click further, each data set has forward and reverse reads. Now, let's do something with this. Well, um, what I want to do is I want to map these data sets against human mitochondrial genome. Um, well, let's upload this genome. I don't really have it separately. So I will go back to our tutorial, scroll a little bit down, um, and select this URL. So I'm going to go back to upload data and this contains information about my previous upload. So I will reset that page by clicking on the reset button, click paste fetch again, paste this URL. This time this data set is fasta.gzip. So I'll tell Galaxy what, that, what, what it is and I will click start. And uh, this will create a single data set into my history. That's the reference genome against which I would like to map my reads. Okay, I'm going to use uh, BWA as my mapper. So I'll search for this. Here it is, map with BWAMM. So uh, first I need to tell, to tell BWA uh, what I'm mapping against. And in this case, I want to map against this thing. So instead of using built-in index, I will use genome from history, because this is my history. And it automatically chooses this chromosome m.fa.gzip. Now, next I need to tell BWE what I'm mapping, so where my reads are. And there are several options here. The option we need is paired collection, because 
this is how we organized our data and you can see that immediately once I choose paired collection it will become visible here so that's the collection I want to choose I will keep all other um, options in their default setting and click execute you will see that this creates another collection so BWA takes my collection of reads or runs jobs on them in this case I have four samples so I'm actually running four distinct BWA jobs you can see four entries here but because we start with a collection Galaxy knows that these jobs belong need to be output together as another collection and this is this will be that collection once the BWA mem jobs are finished it will become green and um, it is green now you can see it's done we can click on it to see what it is now it's a flat collection so here we started with a paired collection meaning it had two lay two levels right so if you click you see the first level level of samples and you have the next level level of reads but what BWA mm did it converted the fast Q reads into BAM data set it mapped these reads map reads are represented in different format in a BAM format and there is no longer distinction between forward and reverse all this information contained within uh, within a BAM data set so now it's a simple flat list just a collection containing four data sets you can see that I'm using terms of list collection interchangeably here so if an input is a collection you feed it to a tool tool knows that it needs to actually process data sets individually and then it outputs a collection as well so let's go further further let's uh, call variants on that collection and I will call I will use a uh, tool called low freak and the call variance option of it um, it's a package with several tools I will use the one that calls variants you can see that no BAM data set visible because in fact we don't have individual BAM data sets but we have a collection so if you click on the collection button then the interface will change and you will see you will now be able to select that BAM collection because that's the output it's in a BAM format and the covariance tool takes BAM data sets only uh, as input so here we are mapping against again genome that is in our history that chromosome uh, that, that, that mitochondrial genome let's um, do synvs and indels and um, let's keep everything else default and click execute so this will create yet another collection and this collection now will be in VCF format it's variant call format that's what variant callers are producing so again you start with four BAM data sets low freak starts four individual jobs and then will produce a single collection with four uh, VCF data sets in it okay it's finished and now I have a collection with four VCF data sets in it I can actually look at them so we do have some variants here so uh, and uh, the next step is let's convert these VCF data sets and something which is a little bit easier to look at or into tab delimited data sets and we will do this with um, snip sip tool and in particular with uh, snip sift extract fields right here and the fields I'm going to extract are listed here in the tutorial that's the list of fields I want to extract so I'm just going to paste it in here um, and set one effect per line and I will keep everything else the same oh well see I didn't specify what to run it on and again it does not see any VCFs in my history because it there are there aren't any uh, individual VCF data sets I only have a collection so I need to click on the collection tab and select that covariance output and now I can go ahead and run it it's done let's expand it see we have four tabular data sets one so each data set has a header line specifying what the fields are and then the content and suppose this is all you want to do so you want to generate final report out of this but you kind of still have these four files 
So now I'm going to use one tool from a collection operation section. And in particular, the tool I'm going to use is called collapse collection. It will effectively merge the data sets. But the problem here, of course, is that when I merge data sets, I mean, if we look at the contents of these data sets, so if I merge them together, how do I know which of these variants comes from which sample? Well, Collapse Collection provides an option for dealing with this. So first, let's choose Collection to Collapse. That's going to be this collection, the output of SNP SIFT. And let's keep one header line so we know what columns are. And now I'm going to tell this tool to prepend the name of the data set. And specifically, I'm going to tell it same line and each line in the data set. We'll see in a second what that means. Let's run it. So this tool takes collection as an input, but it produces a single data set as the output. And here is that data set. You can see that it's variants from all four samples merged together, but it prepended the sample name to each line of the output. So I know that, for example, these data sets correspond to blood from mother. These data sets, it's blood from child. These data sets, it's cheek samples from child. And there is a variety of tools for operating on collections and they can be found in this collection operation section.